What is left to be done to further wolf recovery in the U.S., and what would need to happen to make that possible? Ed, Larry, and then Mike. Ed? Well, I, I think the question of more wolves in more places is, is a pretty interesting one. I personally believe the Endangered Species Act certainly did its job in the Midwest and the Northern Rockies. Uh, it's, it's trying to do its job in the Southwest. I'm not sure there's room for more large populations of wolves anywhere in the lower 48 states. I do believe there are a lot of places where you may have a few wolves here, a pack there, all that kind of stuff. I personally believe that the state model may be best to accomplish more wolves in more places now. If you look at one of the great successes in large carnivore restoration, look at the mountain lion. We deliberately tried to kill off all the mountain lions, the devil cats, we persecuted them just like we did wolves. A few hung on. They were never listed. They're in the 18 western states. There's over 30,000 of them. They have a strong constituency that supports mountain lion conservation, mountain lion hunting. It happened at less cost with more social acceptance than wolves did. So I, I think the future of wolf management for more wolves in more places in the lower 48, a better model is local state management of a few wolves in here, not the large populations that the Endangered Species Act re uh, requires us to do. Larry. I think, uh, well, kind of capturing part of what Ed said, uh, I think there is room, and, and first of all, the Endangered Species Act won't do a better job. The act is the act, as, as Mike Phillips pointed out. It's, we can do a better job in the administration of the act. And one of the real challenges is Mexican wolf. And one of the reasons it's a real challenge is you've got less, ten, less than 10% of the historic range in the United States. How do you maintain viable populations of a species on less than 10% of its historical range? Where we need to improve is in our ability to an integrate endangered species work across international lines. We've done that well in a few instances, and I think we have models to follow. Uh, you know, Ridley Sea Turtle is an example of a binational recovery effort. We've got a binational approach to recovery of thick belt parrot that recognizes the Mexican pace, which is the equivalent of an endangered species uh, recovery uh, plan in the United States, and it's built to the standards that satisfy the United States. I think one of the places we can improve in our application of the Act are those species that are transboundary, especially those ones whose northern extent of their range is in proximity to the international border or southern, in, in the case of Canada, the ability to work with other nations, facilitate them bringing their conservation programs up to standard so that we can truly do binational recovery and recover species not only on a fraction of their range that extends into the U.S., but recovering recover those species in the core of their homes that are oftentimes in a nation adjacent to ours. Uh, Mexico's demonstrated a willingness and an ability to work with us. They're far better than us at integrating social needs into these programs. Uh, they have not had the regulatory clout to lean back on, and therefore they've learned to work with their people. We need to learn to work with our neighboring countries. And Mike. Yeah, there's a lot that can be said to this question, so I'm gonna go very quickly. Uh, if you're going to move forward with wolf recovery, you've got to have a recovery plan for the Mexican wolf. Canis lupus balei has no recovery plan. It needs a recovery plan. That plan needs to recognize that for gray wolves, one can make a strong case that subspecific designations don't mean much of anything. Consequently, historical ranges don't mean much of anything. Some really smart people would have you believe the best taxonomic designator for the gray wolf is Canis lupus irregardless. <laughs> so, uh, all due respect to the director, the historical range of the Mexican wolf really has little to do with developing a recovery plan. There is more than enough habitat in the southwestern United States that supports more than sufficient ungulate biomass to recover the Mexican wolf in a manner that's consistent with the spirit and intent of the Endangered Species Act. We've got a plenary session dedicated to that issue this afternoon, and that's what you'll hear. You've got to change the service's vision for Canis lupus nubilis. This is their taxonomic entity. It's not one I would necessarily settle on, but nonetheless, Canis lupus nubilis is what they say uh, lives in the Great Lakes states and drifted west. It drifted west and it included, in its historical range, the Southern Rockies ecoregion. All due respect to Ed, 
there is a mother load of opportunity for large carnivores, including gray wolves, in the southern Rockies Eco region that extends from south central Wyoming through western Colorado into north central New Mexico. An absolute gold mine of opportunity. Canis lupus nubilis is not fairly considered as recovered. There is not even a recovery plan that looks at its entire historic range. The service's vision for nubilis is short-sighted, needs to change, and there is habitat that would support yet another robust, self-sufficient, viable population, that being in the Southern Rockies ecoregion. Those are at least two things that need to be done to advance recovery under the Endangered Species Act.